All right, so the uh, LinkedIn profile is going to uh, really be determined how you're going to fill it in based on your goals. So as I said, um, let's take a general look at the different screens first to get acclimated, and then we will look at specific aspects of LinkedIn. So like the other networks, we also have uh, search. So this is one of the things that I think a lot of people overlook in using any of these social networks. You can search inside of the system. We're used to doing a search out on the regular web, you know, a Google search or a, a search in Yahoo or Bing or whatever. But each network has a way to search within its own system, its own sort of database. And that, I think, can be very powerful when you need to focus because a Google search is going to search all over the internet and it might give you results that are not quite so relevant for you. So just for curiosity and to see how it works, let's say I have a realty business um, and I were to search that keyword real estate. I see suggestions of jobs requiring the skill real estate people with the skills, real estate, and then various companies, groups, schools, and people. So if you realize that you can use search for your purposes, you should realize that other people are using search for their purpose. Like I showed here, people with the skills of real estate. So if from the other side, if I was trying to find a realtor, or I was trying to find someone that knew about real estate and reach out to them or hire them and such, I could go into LinkedIn, search that keyword, and then say, show me people with the skill of real estate, and I get 7 million results. Now there is a way to further refine it based on location and all of that, so this is 7 million, 7.6 million results on LinkedIn. I see US, I see New York, uh, the Emirates, um, San Francisco, etc. So, a big net, but using these filters, which you can look at on your own, using these filters, I can find the right person. Uh, this is the part about that, uh, using it selfishly. So, making the note, use LinkedIn search like every other network. Use LinkedIn search. find people with a skill keyword well after you find them then you figure out what you want to do if they're valuable to you you could then uh, connect with them contact them So connecting is, is the follow. You can follow. Although it's different on LinkedIn, it's a little bit more like classic Facebook in that I, I, send, a fa I send you a, a request on Facebook. And uh, you have to agree. We both agree to connect on Facebook, and therefore we can see each other's content. LinkedIn is like that. Uh, depending how they set up their account. Mine is totally public, so you don't even have to connect with me to see all my stuff. I've got it public. But a lot of people, they put some of it private, or all of it private, and people will not be able to see it unless they try to reach out to me to connect, and then I agree to that. Contact is, depending on also how they've got their account set up, you see these ones say connect, this one says send in-mail. So in-mail is the internal email system that LinkedIn uses. And notice that most people don't have that because that has to do with this premium, the aspect of LinkedIn that is not free. Contact them, usually via in-mail. Pay. 
paid aspects of LinkedIn premium. We can see all of the benefits of it a little later, but one of them is uh, a more direct communication with people. That might be the biggest good reason to use it, to connect with people more directly. And so all of these social networks have tried to figure out a way to make money. And uh, with most of them, it's ads. And LinkedIn does have ads for like a, a business, but they seem to make most of their money through the premium uh, subscription. You can use LinkedIn in a slightly different tier and get more out of it if you go premium. I have a question. So um, what is the degree of connections, like the first degree or level, right? First, second, third. What does that have to do with the ability to either connect or send an email without, without paying? I think possibly only the first connection would let you do that. So a connection, first connection is that I am directly connected with someone else. And everything else is friends of friends. Mm -hmm. So I'm connected to John, that's the first connection, because John is connected with Mary, so that would be a second level connection. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, Mary's connected with Bill, so then if I try to connect with Bill, that's a third level connection, and plus. So I'm pretty sure that anything past the first connection, you really can't connect with it, because then it would get too much like spam. All right. So then I'm gonna reach out to 7,000 people and try to connect with them because they're a seventh level connection. So the first level connection is going to be the most valuable because you have the most ability to. It used to be the time, I don't know if it still happens, that um, LinkedIn will uh, kind of penalize you if you were trying to connect with somebody that's not in the first. There is still some of that. They, are, they, they do a better job than these other networks about trying to make connections like, okay, Chico Real Estate, if I try to click connect, uh, nowadays, it's going to ask me also, how do you know them? So if we both have shared, for example, a past employer, that's going to be a better result for us to try to connect. If we don't have any sort of background at all that we share at all, it might be a little more difficult to connect. And then the person on the other side can, can see the notification that, that, that says I'm trying to connect and approve them or deny them and respond, why? I don't know this person at all, oh, this person is spam, whatever. So I do like that aspect of LinkedIn that, it, yeah, you can try to connect with anyone, but it does a good way, it does a good job, I think, of kind of shielding you from the real spammers and all of that. So LinkedIn has degrees of separation. First level, second third plus a direct connection, we call it a follow, friend, whatever, direct connection with a person. You have both uh, agreed to connect, so uh, you will have full, m more access to each other's profile, what you've posted, and the different screens of content. Second, a friend of a friend. And anything past that. A friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. Right, just deeper levels, different connections. Uh, you get better results, better connection results, if you share some background info with whom you're trying to connect with, with whom you're trying to connect. Uh, so if you shared a, a high school or a college or a, an, an employer, that most likely will, will be a better chance of a connection than just someone randomly. And I'll show that example right now in my inbox. Uh, people uh, trying to connect with me, 
and I have to decide. Uh, I'm simply not just going to click allow for everyone. Again, I'm very judicious. I have gotten a lot of requests over the years, especially being pretty public, in a public uh, teaching institute and such. People, I don't doubt, I, uh, a lot of you have already tried to request. And again, don't take it bad if I don't uh, connect with you. Um, but you have to use this network especially. How is it most valuable to me? What do I get out of it? If I connect with you, the opposite, um, you know, you could get, if, if you're trying to connect with me, you could get, uh, you know, second or third level connections that could be valuable to you. I remember reading an article a couple of years ago, however, that was critical of what I'm saying in that I'm saying use, self, use Facebook uh, selfishly. And there was an article uh, that went viral for a few days where it was that yes, some you know high-level person in a company uh, replied to someone that tried to connect with her, and I guess both people were at fault. But the reason it went viral is because the lower-level person trying to connect with the higher-level person replied by saying, "Why would I even connect with you? What? Why would you even try to uh, connect with me? What? You're just this level, and I'm this level." So they were taking it to the extreme of what I'm saying. You know, you don't have to be obvious about it and mean and reply that way. You just say, you know, reject. But this person really went out of their way to say, like, why, how do, how do, why do you even dare to try to connect with me? Well, then that went viral. It went all over the place. And then I don't know what happened in the end, but someone got egg on their face and they looked like mean, a mean person. And uh, it's unfortunate. So what I'm saying then... I could, you know, I could see people just randomly checking here. Okay, Wenda Lopez, executive director at Morumbi Real Estate in Sao Paulo, Brazil. So a little bit out of my uh, circles, but I could uh, try to send them or connect with them. Here I've got, okay, uh, Roman Cedillo, uh, real estate investor, second level connection. So. I have a connection with these people directly, and then these people have a connection with him, so this is a second level. If I choose to try to connect, he he's going to get a notification that says, Victor would like to connect with you, and then Roman could uh, choose to check out my profile. Who is this Victor? It says that I'm, that they are connected. It says that Victor's connected with them in the middle, but who is he? So he's going to go to my profile probably, check out my education, my jobs, whatever, and then decide yes or no to approve. Now LinkedIn does, it's one of the few networks that's a tattletale in that it tells you who has visited your profile. Almost every other network doesn't. Every other network you can go spy, I mean do reconnaissance on other people, and they won't really tell them. Here it will. It'll tell you everyone who has looked at your profile. And if you get the premium one, it tells you even more information. So be careful there. If you're doing headhunting or reconnaissance or, or whatever, and you're going to look at everyone's account, it's going to tell them that if you look at your account. How come all yours is real estate? Is it because you just searched real estate? Yeah, these are the results of me searching real estate at okay. the moment. So let's see here. We can say, uh, be careful. LinkedIn reports who visited a profile. So either it will tell you who has visited your profile, or if you've been visiting profiles, it'll tell them. That may or may not matter to you, uh, but it's something to keep in mind, that it will tell the person someone's been looking at your profile. Now they use it, LinkedIn also uses it as a marketing tool, because it'll say, 12 people looked at your profile, and it'll kind of give you a general list. And then if you want even more info, it'll say, don't forget to upgrade to premium, to get even more insights into who's visiting your account. I have never used the premium version of LinkedIn, but from the articles and such that I've read, it is valuable. Although I think it's kind of expensive, I didn't find the price for it, but let's see if I can find a price. If your career get hired, business sales, let's just see this first one. 
start my free. Oh, here it is. After your free month, it's twenty nine ninety nine a month. Mm -hmm. So that's over three hundred dollars a year. If you're you using, see the what's that? Did you see the benefit of it? I mean, well, like I said, I haven't used it myself oh, to give you that right. result, but from articles and such that I've read, there is the benefit that you can connect with people more directly, and you get more uh, data. Uh, instant access to salaries. And then something else that we'll look at here in video courses. So there's online training that uh, you get out of it also. Let's say if I wanted to go to these higher levels, I'm a business. $47.99 a month. Uh, if I'm a business and what do I get out of it is uh, the in-mail messages, business insights, more detail on who's viewed my profile, browsing, up to third degree and so forth. If I'm in sales, $64.99 a month. And finally, if I'm trying to hire, $99 a month. Wow. So uh, I, I think it does work for LinkedIn to offer all of these different tiers. But at the very least, one month free. So maybe you uh, can try it out for one month. You get, you get that great job, and then you cancel it. But it says pay as little as ninety nine. That's if you want to be billed annually. So you just true. Want one month. It'll probably be five or ten dollars more if it's just that one month. Yeah, that's a good eye right there. So uh, yeah, if you get if you get that billed for the whole year, it's down to ninety nine. But I'm sure somewhere here it'll tell you month to month price. Sales tax not included. Okay, so, okay, just to see, just to go here further, so uh, I was, I had, if you click back on the LinkedIn logo, it takes you back to the home screen, you can always navigate back home, uh, I was looking at search, you you can go through search on your own to see what value it is to you, the logo takes you back to home, so there's a little home icon right there. Home is like every other social network where if you're connected with people or you're following accounts, you will see their status updates. So here under home, here's my info. Okay, 48 people viewed my profile recently. Uh, 30 people viewed the last article, the last thing that I wrote, the last thing that I posted. So they call me an article, but that's just another term for you know posting or sharing or whatever. It's, it's an article because it's more professional. So this is the same thing that could be for the other networks, and that it could be text, it could be photos, uh, video links, etc. And uh, no, I am not directly connected with Bill Gates, but you can follow other people's accounts to see what articles they are <laughs> publishing. So I'm just kind of browsing through here, these different uh, accounts. You also see something like uh, promoted. So over here, box promoted there. Uh, their post to uh, have more people see it. They're trying to get people to sign up for the box account. Um, so again, following different people based on uh, what interests I have. And um, let's see, are there any examples of my regular connections? I might not have posted recently. But I like LinkedIn for all of these sort of professional um, articles, professionally related articles that you can um, see. Now, notice here also, I wouldn't really call this tattletale, but you could think about it this way. I'm connected to Teresa. She commented on that article. So that's something to be aware of, that LinkedIn could show some of your activity to your connections. So she wrote here onto this message from Haley, trusted executive recruiter, etc. one week ago. What she wrote here got 23 likes, 19 comments. And Teresa, who I'm connected with, wrote a comment, and then her comment got a couple of likes. So she's doing a good tactic. She actually took these classes. Um, and I know I said I usually don't connect with students, but I might connect with students. 
if they're valuable to me, and after the class ends. Even though there's no classes and all of that, I don't want there to be a conflict of interest that we're buddies on social media, and why did I not give you that A in the class? So after the classes, I might connect. So she's taking what she's learned in these classes, and one of the tactics that we've talked in other networks that also applies here is be active with those that are active. If you uh, talk to and reply to people that are active, maybe that one person there is so big and famous, they might never reply to you. But she did get a couple of likes from other regular people uh, on LinkedIn, which could lead to other things such as a follow, a connection, reading your article, buying your product. We did talk about it on the other networks, but it's good to reiterate it on any network. Try to be active on content, on the content of those that are active. Comment on someone's, so for example, so for example, comment on someone's uh, article, which is a post. Comment on someone's article related to your business. sure it's on topic. Result could be likes, follows, you know, some conversion, whatever your goal of the conversion is. And we said a conversion is any goal that you set up that is valuable to you. So out of her insight here, I can see quickly she got two likes. She may have then gotten follows. And those follows or connections might further her goals. So going back here, be careful. LinkedIn reports who visited your profile and some of your public activity. So I'm not following the original person, but because I am connected with Teresa, LinkedIn has said, Teresa commented on this. You both have a connection. You probably have similar interests or goals. Therefore, we as LinkedIn will show you that, and it might be valuable to you. Okay, so the next item up here, my network. So here's the invitations. <clears throat> These are people trying to connect with me up here on my network. Uh, so doing a quick browse. These are, it shows me the previews three. Doing a, pro, uh, doing a quick browse right here. Um, I would already pick one to ignore. Anyone guess which of these three, perhaps? And I don't want to embarrass anyone, but why might I not pick one of these to accept? I don't connect with unknown people. I don't connect with generic icon people that haven't completed their account. Uh, I, I don't know, I, I can't see who they are, I don't know who they are, I don't know how we have a connection, and that sort of thing. You, you have the opportunity to, when you try to connect with someone, you can write a little message to try to entice them to connect. So Nate over here, he wrote, I just moved to Oceanside, etc. Max, I'd like to add you to professional network. That's the generic one, we didn't really change it. This one has been customized. But as I said, my checklist about filling in your details, putting in a photo and all of that. 
that that is real. There's a lot of articles out there that you're going to read about how to use LinkedIn, and they're all going to tell you over and over, complete your profile. And yes, that photo matters. It's This is LinkedIn about connecting real people with real people. So if I don't see a profile picture, I I know that myself. I'm probably I'm going to click ignore right away. If they didn't take the time to complete their profile, uh, it might give me an idea that you know they're not valuable to me. I'm going to look at the show more. So again, right here, I know uh, I know John, but he doesn't have his his fill in here and Billy as well. I know him. But I'm probably going to ignore them too because when because people can see each other's connections and this is all public. When someone goes to my own profile and sees who is he connected to, and if they see people that don't have the icon even filled in, they, it might not look good on me that they haven't completed their profile. So as I look through here, and then I see, you know, there's uh, Mallory, okay, probably accept her, and uh, there's Barb. Okay, so I see these different ones, I can click accept, and I'll do this, of course, on my own time. But looking at it, and, and some people, um, it shows that little chain there, the link. Okay, I, I'm connected to Ernesto, and this is a friend of a friend. And then, uh, based on that, choose to accept or not. But it's totally fine to click ignore. They don't get a notification that says Victor has ignored you. At least it doesn't tell them that. Uh, they just don't get the connection. If you really ignore it and you don't click on it, will it eventually go away? No. It does stay there and they add up until you deal with them. So under my network screen, manage who wishes to connect with you. Again, the advice is connect with those that are valuable to you. And I do realize that might be kind of a high bar. Simply because they don't have the icon, you're not going to even give them a chance with the amount of things that most of us have to do throughout the day. And if you've taken this class and you're learning about all of these networks, um, yeah, even that moment to, to check out their profile and really give them a chance is too much. I've got a lot of things to do. You know, again, personally, I teach at two colleges. Personally, I also have clients with design on the side. Personally, I have other things to do. So just to go in and say, who really is this person? I don't see their icon teacher at UCSD, I'm going to click on their profile and go check them out. Okay, I remember who Billy is now. Even that, I think, for me, is too much effort. And yes, for you, it could have been a wasted opportunity. Maybe it is valuable to accept with everyone. There's really no wrong way to use any of these networks. But I have found that it is uh, better to have a higher bar and only accept those that are valuable to you. LinkedIn is also going to do this a lot, which is, these are the people that directly wanted to connect with me, that they took the effort to connect with me. What LinkedIn does a lot also, it gives you a lot of these people you may know. So it'll give me a variety of people based on connections. So, Han Su here, she didn't ask to be connected with me. LinkedIn is saying she might want to, it might be valuable for you to, to connect because we, have, we share these connections. Over here, uh, it says it might be valuable to connect with Patricia because you both are part of the SWC CIS group. And over here, you both have attended or worked at or been at Southwestern College. So none of these have reached out to me directly. I would be the one trying to reach out. I would click 
for Tareen and she would get the notification that says, Victor would like to connect with you. Then she has to make the decision of who is this person, how do I know them, uh, approve it or deny it, or report them. So be aware of that, that the suggestions are that you are making the first move. Yes. You know, sometimes I get invites from people that I don't really know. Maybe they're in the same industry, but, you know, I would love the opportunity to ask them why do they want to connect, but you don't have that option to so you accept what you want. Exactly, and that's the reason why their premium service could be valuable, because you get more of those features you know, a simple like reply to them like, okay, who, who are you? Even that is part of the higher levels of paying for more services. So it is, it is something that would be valuable for most people, but they've chosen to have it as part of one of their paid tiers. So you just have to be aware of that, that you can, you can get that extra feature, but you'll have to pay. One month free? as many as you want, but you have to use different email addresses. People you may know, you are making the first connection. At the very least, you, you can't email them or ask them, sure, but you can click on their profile and view a little bit about them and then that might be enough for you to make a decision. So, Or you can accept them and then talk to them and then you can... Sure, unconnect them. Link them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so then there's a section on jobs. Pretty self-explanatory. This is where you can apply for jobs or you can post jobs. This jobs screen, based on how you have filled your profile, will start to show you jobs you may be interested in. If your account has not been filled in very much, it might not give you very good results here because it doesn't quite know what you are good at and such. It's going to keep then telling you try premium because Victor get a free professional profile review. So if you get the premium here's another service that you would get for that you know whatever 29 a month uh, which is they will review your profile and make sure it's all fully set up the best way to try to get hired or a result. As I browse here, I'm also going to see some that are listed as sponsored. So obviously that means these companies paid to try to reach the right people that they think based on various statistics. You would have this ability as well. If you, as we'll see a little later, if you, uh, per, if you, you know, sort of boost your posts in LinkedIn, you could uh, reach more people that would, would be most valuable to you. So they have this whole job screen that you could get something out of. Messaging is the one-on-one -on -one messaging. Unfortunately, you do get sponsored messages, which I think is completely annoying. Nothing happens. You don't, you don't really get that on, on the other networks this one you do. So Cisco Meraki has paid to send me a message to tell me that there's an upcoming webinar. And that's based on, since I've filled in uh, my LinkedIn profile about technology and computers and such, 
this person or company felt that it would be beneficial to them to pay to send me a direct message. Uh, they wasted their money because I'm not interested. <laughs> but for you as the business, you do you see the value of that? That I can target, I can send messages directly to certain people that would be most interested in uh, what my business is, my company, my products, whatever. Uh, but again, like the other networks, it's not free. It's sort of like for boosting, it's different than the premium, and it could be on a case-by-case -case basis. But normally the messaging is where you would have the private direct messages with your uh, connections. Notifications is uh, just like every other network. So it says someone on LinkedIn viewed your profile. And I can go look there to see everyone that did. It'll update me things uh, with my connections. So Gabby has worked at Southwestern College seven years. I can like that. I can say congrats on that. I can do more things. You appeared in four searches this week. So when people were searching these various things, my profile appeared there. So it has aspects of personal networks and professional networks, such as wish had our though a happy birthday. Sure. And then it's also congratulate people on a job anniversary and all of that. And then under me, there's a variety of things here. view profile, account settings, and all of that. So uh, under settings, you should look at that at some point. For any of these networks, if, if I don't really go into it, I recommend you look at it yourself. But settings is one of the ones that you should go into if you think you're getting too many emails, if you're not seeing what you, what you think you should be seeing, be sure to check settings. And a little later we'll get to this, but notice here, I work with or I connect with or I manage other companies. So same thing like uh, the other networks. You can create a company listing. And you can post stuff there and try to get uh, hired that way or hire people yourself and, and everything. So this is going to be uh, a screen that we will see about creating and managing companies a little later. <clears throat> Let's do this. If you click on your icon, mine has my picture filled in, yours might not, but if you click there, click on View Profile, and so this is what I showed earlier but from a different perspective. This is the spot where you would go in to put your photo, put in some sort of top graphic, fill in all of these details, you will see this pencil, and a variety of sections. All of that can be edited whenever you want, as much as you want. Whenever you see any of these three dot menus, there are extra things, such as save this as a PDF. So again, it's a resume 2.0, and you can actually then save it as a resume file as a PDF. So everything that I've got there as my account, I can save that as a PDF file. Let's see what it looks like like a resume. It doesn't look like the big flashy one online, and that's fine. I, I, don't, I don't need that. Uh, it looks like a real kind of resume. So once you fill in your account here, you'll have the option on that three dots menu to save it as a PDF. Or share it. Send it to people uh, throughout LinkedIn and or copy it as, a, as my link address and attach it. From this screen, we'll look at the items down there. But from this screen, one of the most important things is edit public profile and URL. So this is where you would go to set your vanity URL. The default, again, most of you, when you first set this up, will have something like linkedin.com slash xyz. 
some kind of gibberish. So if we look at this briefly from the profile here, selecting Edit Public Profile and URL. Click on that. I've already set it, but on the right side I see a pencil to claim that name. I didn't exactly say it earlier, but on most of these classes I, I recommend create a testing account to just practice and uh, learn this, and it doesn't matter if you make mistakes, you can delete it. I didn't say it for this one because I think most of us will probably use this account for real, and therefore this public URL that you can set here, we want to use a real name. Your URL must contain 5 to 30 letters or numbers. Do not use spaces, symbols, or special characters. Customize your public profile. This is where uh, I said earlier about you can have a private, public, or somewhere in the middle. So if you set that make my public profile visible to no one, I don't think you get too much of a of a usefulness out of LinkedIn or any of these profiles when they're when they're when they're private. You would do public and it has to have basic information public, which is consists of your name, number of connections, industry, and region. Picture, you have to have some kind of picture such as your public, anything that you've set to public. And all of these other ones, however, these can be these can be uh, turned off to to um, in enhance the privacy. The last item here: create a public profile badge. This is a little icon that that you can add to your website. It's a little technical, but coming to this badge builder, step one, copy this line of code into your website. Okay, well, if, if you don't know what the code is or how to paste it to your site, this screen will not be very useful to you. But the point of this is to then set it up so that it looks something like this. On my website or some sort of profile that I have, I would see one of these designs, or I could do one of these designs. But it does require a little bit of copying and pasting of HTML website code. And if I'm not familiar with that, it might not be something I want to do. Those are, those are, uh, you find that via the view profile. You can add your profile in multiple languages. You can change, you can create sort of copies of your profile in different languages to reach different demographics if necessary. And then the nitty-gritty of the profile is, is right over here. Uh, we have all of these areas for experience, education, and everything. The different sections, skills, recommendations, projects. So you will see add new profile section work experience, education, skills, accomplishments. So here's the part where you can fill in the courses you've, you've been involved in, or certifications or projects. Yes? 
So on your page, you're, you have the experience then this projects, right? Mm -hmm. um, which I like the way that's formatted. But when I look at my LinkedIn and I add projects to it, it goes underneath accomplishments. It's not its own separate area. So is that because when it's a public profile, it moves, but when you see it on your own profile, it's down below? Or is there a way to format it that way? I'm pretty sure there's a way to rearrange these different sections. When you're saying it, it's like the same, do you see a separator between yeah, them? Yeah, I mean, if you scroll down, there's your experience, mm -hmm. right? And then education. Oh. It is part of the same section. If you see a divider, it's a different section. No, I know, but when we... When, when I went to your LinkedIn page when we first started the class, mm -hmm. and you have the experience, and then there's projects right underneath it. It. Yeah, I it, guess you, if I'm, so I'm just wondering if this is how it looks on a public profile. It, it arranges it that way. I believe so because if you're looking at if you're looking at it via this link, which is the one that I gave earlier in the day, yeah, that's so, how it should look. How they have it. So no, it's in your other one, maybe to the one to the left there. It's this one. No, both both of them have the same address, um, and I see maybe it's. Maybe when you're not signed in, then so when you're not signed in and you do a search. Way your profile looks like it, it has that picture summary on top, and then your post and activity, then a summary, experience, projects. Let's see here. I'm looking at it in the in a different browser when I'm not signed in, so, so it may be. One. So do you see some experience and uh, no, projects? projects. You see how it's nice out so um, it could then depending if I'm logged in or logged out show it in a different way but I, I think I remember that there was a way to rearrange these sections I know that there's this way to rearrange each item in a section I'm pretty sure I remember being able to also edit these, these, yeah so I mean I like the way it looks when you're not logged in because Projects right there are separate. Mm -hmm. But when you're logged in on your profile and you add Yes, uh, so I think that's the thing that it's not going to, I don't think we have that control. I know what you're saying about there being different views, but I don't see a way to control that, unfortunately. I, I think I remember there being a way to rearrange it, but I don't doubt that maybe they took it out. These networks change all the time, so if you like a certain view, it's going to be dependent on how you're viewing it. So when you go to add new profile section on the right-hand side, when you go to the drop-down menu, there is a choice to add projects mm -hmm. under accomplishments, and then there's projects. So when you add the projects now, it goes underneath all the way to the bottom of your profile, and it's not separated as nicely as your other profiles. Yeah, so that comes back to if LinkedIn set it up this way, we can't do anything about it. I'm just wondering how it's you can see it two different ways. Sometimes we sometimes these networks do that, that depending if the person is logged in or not, they show it in a slightly different way because that uh, is known as A B testing, version A, version B, A B testing. So um, to see if version A gets better results for people or version B. So maybe as they're using us perhaps as a guinea pig and people are liking version B more than 
they will eventually implement version B. Yeah, we we'll wake up one morning and it's different. Known to do that though, right? They change all the time. Facebook yeah. too. Yeah, they change all the time. So I remember there being a way to drag and drop these sections, and I don't see it now. So they they changed it just like Facebook and the other networks. So that's annoying for us because then we need to relearn something. So on your own, what makes sense for you, you would be adding these profile sections, your background information and all of that, and probably you'd be looking at accomplishments a lot. Here's a lot of things that can be filled in. Test scores, languages, organizations. Most likely, uh, if you've connected with one person, that person probably has a dozen connections. So LinkedIn does this a lot, that it tries to make more connections. Here's someone that you know, and here's someone that they know, and you might want to know each other. So I, I think at a certain point it's trying to show you too much. And you can just ignore it or see, like, actually that person is out. Yeah, and part of the reason why there might be some that you don't know is because since you don't use it very much, you don't log in very much, it doesn't know who's going to be a better connection for you. Yeah, it might not have been useful to you. To, to, to log in so it doesn't quite know what to what to show you but it tries to show something okay so under this uh, me you have those items and then next we have work so let's look a few let's look at a few items under work if you uh, click those uh, nine little dots there under work let's look first at learning if you look at learning this takes you to their online learning system, which you might have heard of this before. How many of you have ever heard of a website called lynda.com? L-Y-N-D-A, lynda.com. lynda.com is a website that's been out there, uh, it feels like, for 20 years. And they're the biggest name in um, training, online training. They started off as uh, a series of books. And I remember in the 10 years that I've been teaching at colleges, their, their series of books have been so valuable in, in my various classes, so well written and laid out and, and really good. Uh, online education and training is so popular now, and they are at the vanguard of that. So lynda.com is a place where you can go and there's 6,166 courses in business, technology, creative skills, and such. So learning about various software packages, design, development, photography. There's lots of courses on a variety of topics. It's not free, however. Um, so what do we have here? Learning Phone Gap, Learning Visual Studio. There's a lot of programming ones. Stay sharp in a variety of things. Digital marketing. So here is a course of 23 hours. You do these at your own, at your own pace. There's a try it for free. Price wise, $19.99 a month after the free trial. Basic access, which you don't get a couple of items. For example, offline viewing, you have to have an internet connection. You go with $29 a month, and then you get that full access. 
So th this is, lynda.com definitely is one of the big, big, famous online training sites. So big, look at this, LinkedIn bought them. They were independent for a long time, and a few years ago, LinkedIn bought them for a few billion dollars because they were the biggest name in this space. And LinkedIn, a professional social network, they felt this is a good item to have with our own account. I'm not sure if paying for the premium LinkedIn account then gives you some access to lynda.com. Probably. But I, I don't know that. You could look it up. Or you could get the lynda.com account, but that probably doesn't give you LinkedIn Premium. But LinkedIn now is part of, or uh, lynda.com is now part of the LinkedIn family. And you kind of see it from a different perspective, but it's the same thing. There's lynda.com, L Y N D A. And there's also the LinkedIn Learning, which is a variation of that. And you get, again, one free month. You get these various courses, top 10 social media management tools, 32,000 views, watch a preview. Then after that, it is lectures on these various things. So here I mentioned Buffer. Here's a here's a lecture video more about Buffer. Uh, Hootsuite often gets mentioned. There, There's one there. Uh, I don't remember if I mentioned Sprout Social before, but all of these are for these management tools. I, I don't have time to do every single one of these, so something like Buffer will let me control everything at once. TweetDeck, Social Bro, every post. So this is their, their online training, this is lynda.com. And this is, uh, I've seen it in the real world with so many of my colleagues that they need to brush up on something, brush up on Photoshop or uh, learning some sort of aspect of marketing or app development. And even with the one free trial, one month free trial, you can get a lot out of it. You know, just drink a lot of Red Bull and then you'll be able to watch as many of these uh, videos as you can. You get the $29 one, uh, you can download the file. So that's one of these aspects in work. Let's look at another one. Let's jump down to SlideShare. Has anyone heard of SlideShare.net before? So let's look at SlideShare right here. SlideShare has been around a while. I would say it feels like at least 10 years. And in internet time, that's a long time. Those websites come and go. LinkedIn or um, SlideShare was a, was a company that existed for years, then eventually they got bought by LinkedIn as well. Link, uh, SlideShare, basically you can think about it as the YouTube of PowerPoint. So YouTube, of course, is a place where everyone uses that for video. Well, SlideShare is the LinkedIn, is, is, the, is the YouTube of PowerPoint. So PowerPoint presentations. It says, discover, share, learn. Share what you know and love through presentations, infographics, documents, and more. So this is another social network. It's another place for you to create a, a profile and connect with people and all of that. And yet another thing to learn. But the value of all of these social networks is, again, views and activity and such. So, Shirsanka wrote this, Taming the Ever-Evolving Compliance Beast. So, 
they are giving out information on the topic of compliance. And they have 8,000 views. Uh, LinkedIn themselves put out insights from our workplace learning report. So here's a report, 2017 report on what the workplace is like nowadays. Uh, various stats, I suppose. That has 220,000 views. Uh, T over here, how LinkedIn built a community of half a billion. So the success story of LinkedIn and how it might work for my own business. 300,000 views. Here's some other ones. <clears throat> Um, Rand Fishkin, inside Google's numbers in 2017. So people create these <clears throat> these presentations and upload them. They share their knowledge. The point of that again is views and traffic. If you create some sort of presentation that is valuable for people, that can give you traffic. That can help you go viral. How to become a thought leader in your niche by Leslie Samuel. Uploaded seven months ago, 542,000 views. This has, this has search. Let's see what if I, again, I search for real estate. Just search real estate. 25 real estate marketing ideas. So from Fit Small Business, they put out a presentation, 304 likes. Uh, I can click to show how many views. 50,000 views. So let's, let's look at the big idea here. Slideshare.net, the YouTube of PowerPoint. Create presentations on your expertise. To reach an audience. Create how to or tutorial PowerPoints or presentations generically. Presentations that get shared go viral. Ten to twenty slides. Too few slides, and you know the screen full of information. Too few, fewer than ten. It's it's not as meaningful. It doesn't. It it isn't as sticky. Have you heard of that term, sticky stickiness? That's defined as okay. So saying less than ten not sticky enough. Sticky in, in terms here is that they stick around, that they stay, that they look at your presentation. Uh, if, if it's too short, they, they, they breeze through it and then they're gone onto something else. Having a few more than that, more than 10, a person most likely will want to see, well, what else are they telling me? Uh, I'm on slide eight. Uh, I can see there there's like four more slides. I like what I see so far. I want to keep looking at more. So sticky. Sticky are traits that have people stick around your content. something is sticky, if it has a value for people? Is it interesting? Is it uh, useful? Some more tips here. Well, tip zero is write about your expertise. Write about what you know. Don't make it up. Hopefully, you know, don't make it up because you think this is what I think is hot at the moment. People are really interested. You know, tax time is coming up. So I'm going to write an article about top tax tips. 
but I'm not quite qualified for that, so obviously you shouldn't. You would write, you would create a presentation about what you know about to share that knowledge. You would have it a good amount. More than 20 is too much then. Too much to read. You can do 22, 25, that's not so bad, but some of these that are like 75 slides, people are not looking at those. They might jump around and miss the, the general idea, but again, like a resume, there's, there's the classic one-page resume. So you could think of writing a seven-page resume, then it's not a resume, it's a CV, but in one page, can you get across what you need to do for that particular job in, in that resume. In this slideshow, can you get across what you need to do in up to 20 slides? If it's more than that, maybe you have you know 53 slides that would be perfect. That gives me the idea to create two presentations. Because if you make that 53 slide presentation this month, again, on all of these networks, you have to be active. I saw your great presentation this month. What's in store for me next month? So if you have you know, a 50-slide presentation, I could break that up into 2 of 25 or 5 of 10. And there I've got 5 months or 5 weeks of content, the first piece, the next piece, the following piece. Is there any cost associated with uploading? No, this one is completely free. So right here. And the caveat is that if you go in, you're probably interested in it, but whoever, whosever presentation you see at, it's, they're going to get your information. No. You can see it without. No, this one is different. Uh, it doesn't have that sort of tattletale feature of LinkedIn. You can, for, for your fit small business, I can go click it. It'll just mark it that there was one more view, but it won't say who saw it. But can, you can share your slide on your LinkedIn yes. profile? Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you share your slide on other social networks? Yes. So if we look at an individual presentation, there's this particular presentation. It says 116 people clipped it, which is sort of like giving it a like. Um, and the name of it and such. Then we've got share and like. So clicking share here gives me the ability to send it off to Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter. I can also email it to people, uh, embed it on a website or a WordPress website, or just grab the link. Could you do that with YouTube? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, when we get to YouTube, we'll see the, almost the same thing. We've got a YouTube video, but I can also put it over on my Facebook. I can embed it on my website and send it by an email. So, from a demographic standpoint, is LinkedIn less than what YouTube can give you? Well, it's demographics wise, uh, you know, they both have hundreds of millions of users right. to find the right audience. It just matters the audience. If I'm trying to find a more professional audience, LinkedIn would be better. YouTube is a much general audience, although you can find the, an audience and, and videos of everything. Uh, this SlideShare and LinkedIn lean toward profession. So here's an example. I haven't seen this one yet, but let's see if it has the points that I want to mention further for a good presentation. So uh, I, I randomly chose this one, 25 real estate marketing ideas. It's got 29 slides, it's not so bad, okay, 29, 30, it's not terrible. Again, 50, 60, 70, 100 slides, I think that's too much. I would have liked it a bit under 20, but there are 25 tips, so most likely there's 25 slides, plus a few extra ones we'll see, such as the cover slide. This is the first one people see. So what do they say? You can judge a book by its cover. So you can't judge a presentation by its cover. Just by looking at it here, uh, I'm getting a sense of what this is about, the uh, marketing ideas, 25 of them. And I see fitsmallbusiness.com, get your business into shape. So they're doing this right. They have this sort of cover 
slide that hopefully catches people's attention, but it has then the marketing, it has sort of the branding, a watermark sort of, of the business, fit small business. And that's not an active link, unfortunately, that will go to the website. I don't think you can embed that but it's got the name of the website, and if I really like the pr this presentation, I might say, let me go check out fitsmallbusiness.com and actually go to their website. So the pro tip right here is have a cover slide to catch attention, entice views, and has branding. Branding is simply the name of your company, better yet your company's web address. Catching attention and enticing views, that's, I, that's hard to teach. I, I can't teach that. That depends on everyone's business. What kind of picture is going to catch people's attention? What kind of clever phrase it's going to catch their attention to stop and look at it at least, then entice the view, is that cover image enough for them to click next slide? Next slide. That I can't teach, but I would say go to back to Social Media Examiner and get plenty of ideas there. Socialmediaexaminer.com for slide share ideas. Ideas of content to create. This one is top 25 tips for real estate. Those are very popular types of content. Top 10 whatever, top 20 whatever, bottom 5 worst whatever. These lists of things are very popular because they're very digestible chunks of content. You've probably read an article or watched the video about top 5 whatever and then saw another one right afterward because it was so, so useful or addicting. So these sort of list articles. List articles. Sometimes they call them listicles, which I don't like that word. So list articles. Let's see what else here. So second slide. In real estate, location is everything. And then more explanation. Next. It can be frustrating to figure out where and how to market your real estate. Okay, so a couple of like two introductory slides going back. Uh, okay, uh, clipping is a little bit different than liking. Clipping, if you like one particular slide itself, you can sort of bookmark it. So down here, people have bookmarked or clipped some of these most often. It's clipping a slide. You do need to be logged in and have an account and all of that to be able to have access to that to sort of bookmark a slide. But what I was saying was that there's two slides in the beginning. This is kind of optional. This is just style-wise. There's a couple of slides first off that sort of tell you what you're in for. Although that goes back to the classic educational trope about um, tell them what you're about to teach them. Uh, teach them, and then tell them what you just taught them. Have you ever heard that variation of that? So good education, the theory is tell them what you're about to learn, teach them that, and then tell, recap, tell them what you've just learned. So here they're doing that. They're, they're, they're telling you here, what are you about to see in this presentation? Then the actual 25 points come up. Number one. How to use Google Places, Google Plus, local, content marketing, and keyword search. Okay, this does have active links because it then tells you, okay, this is valuable. Click here to get it. And it actually does go over back to their website for the full detail. So you don't have to put the whole 500 word article in the presentation. This is a preview. It would be really good to go back to certain blogs, like make a slideshow of your blogs mm -hmm. for different points. Because that kind of seems like that's what it went to was the blog about that point. Yes, so use it as a way to bring new life to an older blog. 
breathe a new life into an older blog post. A, an overview of the article with a link back to the full article. All of this about how do you create it, you would use PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint, or you would use on the Mac, uh, their software is called Presentation. Presentation, uh, I think it costs $9.99. You might get it for free, I'm not sure, but it's not that expensive. Then on Windows, you've got PowerPoint, which that one, uh, I think it's a subscription, like $79 a year, and you get all of Office. How you create these slides, these presentations, is in the software, PowerPoint or Pages. How you add a link back to your blog, you have to look, you have to learn how to use the software. I believe we offer various office skills classes on campus. If you want to learn PowerPoint and Word and all of that, I believe we do offer that in various days of the of, of the week, either on this campus or other campuses. on point number two, write listings that sell. So again, a, a quick overview, and then with links that go back elsewhere, back to the original page. Now be careful here, this is very subtle, but whenever you put your mouse toward the edge of a slide, it goes to the next slide. Now the problem is he's putting here, or they're putting some of these buttons a little too close to the edge. Look at that, between this pixel here and this pixel right there, I'm trying to click the button, and it's going next. This one's even further to the right. There's a certain point where, look at that, there's only a part where I can click on the button right, right there. So they didn't think about that. There's like one little edge of that button that I can click on, and if I go too far to the right, it's the next slide. Seems like they're too busy. Yeah, I think these are too busy. This, this, the text here is good, but then there's too many little icons, and they don't need to put their the name of uh, you know their business and such on every slide. That takes up valuable space. Let's say we go to the end. Twenty three, four, five, and then slide twenty nine. One more branding page. That's good. Um, one more branding page. See the full article here. Link back to the website. I even went above and beyond. Click here to tweet this presentation, which actually doesn't work. <laughs> and then final slide. Get to the final slides. Recap of the previous. more branding links to your sites. So you can check out SlideShare more on your own. Uh, let's take one more break. And uh, when we come back, we'll look at the creating the business listing. You'll see it's uh, pretty straightforward. And then we would apply what we've talked about with other networks to this one. Let's just get another platform. So it's 12.11. We'll be back at 12.21. And we'll go on. <laughs>